Hi everyone, welcome to Colouring with Kay and thank you for joining me today. So in this video I am going to share some ways that I use fine liners in my colouring books. So there's only really four main ways that I actually use fine liners, um, four main ways anyway, which I'm going to talk about in this video. And um, I think I will show you the fine liners that I've got um, in my collection. I do have, you know, like non-named brands, but I've left them out and I'll just show you the main fine liners which I uh, use. Okay, so Kitty says hello and let's get started. So the fine liners I have, I have these... Um, I've forgotten their name, Stabilo, right? Yes, because I haven't used these quite a while actually. Um, but they are they are quite good. Um, this little bit of scrap paper here shall bring you in. You can see a little bit closer. So yeah, they. I mean, they're quite old. I haven't used them for a while. They're not my favourite, but they are still quite decent to use. Um, I prefer not to use these on say, um, let's say, you know, double sided colouring books because I do find that they go through but on single side colouring books they're actually quite good. Ooh, I nearly actually dropped them then but anyway let's have a look. So um, those are them. So those are the um, Stabilo fine liners and then the other fine liners I have which I do use on a fairly regular basis right am I fully out are the Arteza Inconics now these are um, quite nice I have to say they are um, well they have a number on them so I did actually swatch these when I got them I haven't actually swatched my other fine liners, I don't think, but these I did swatch because I think there's 120, which is like the biggest fine liner set I've seen. And um, I think one or two of them have stopped working. I think they're probably the browns because they're the most used. But what I like about these is that there's such a range and a selection um, and there's quite a lot of pale colours, which is what I really like. So yeah, as I was saying, um, yeah, I really like the fact that there's some really nice pale colours um, in the selection. Um, and Because in the smaller sets, you do get quite a lot of the bright dark colours. And in here, you've got muted, some muted colours as well as some pale colours, which is really good. And um, yeah, do use them. Uh, show you, maybe bring you in a little bit. They are really nice to use. I really do like them. I think they're a 0 0.4 nib, um, which is pretty good as well. So yeah, those are them. I'll bring you out again. Right, so the final um, fine liners that I have, just excuse me while I put the other ones away, are the um, 60 fine liners. Uh, the, well, the ones that I use basically all the time. So these are my Tri Plus fine liners. I actually do put them in a, um, well, this little container thing here. Got some gel pens in there, but I need to sort this out because it's a little bit of a mess. But these are definitely, without doubt, my favourite fine liners, the Stadler Tri Plus fine liners. I mean, I've had a smaller set of these before and I've had a previous 60 set and this is my new 60 set which I've just bought very recently because they went on sale on Prime Day so I got some because my other ones a few of them were running out and they do actually last absolutely ages so yeah these are definitely my favorite and this is what I use pretty much all the time so then right we get started I think um, I'm gonna just now that I've shown you what fine liners I have that I use regularly, um, I'm now going to show you 
um, and I told you my favourite as well which is this Adler Tri Plus I'm now going to share how I use them so the first way is I use them for small details so basically um, you know if you follow my channel that I really like detailed colouring books so postcard books have tiny tiny details I do have other postcard books but this one um, that's got really really small I mean I think it got I can't remember actually where I got this but um, I don't think it was off Amazon but I do think you can buy this book it's called Colour Yourself to Inner Peace by Sue um, I'm not sure um, I don't want to um, mispronounce that but um, I'm sure you can get this it's, it's a lovely book um, really really nice images so for small small details I do use the fine liner and I know that I've used fine liner here on these edges there for this whole background as well you know this sort of orangey um, I don't know peachy more, more peachy I guess than orangey background and then this darker sort of orangey red background here so yeah for um definitely for smaller areas i will use fine liners in fact most of my pages for the small areas i will use fine liner and yes it is more bold but i think that adds to the effect it makes it stand out it makes the pencil stand out against it um sort of a good contrast so i i think it works with it as long as your colors are not too far apart um you know they, they work well so th this here this pink is also a fine liner so on small details um is one place which i use them and also in this book as you know um there are plenty this the japanese townscapes book i got this from amazon japan um my possibly my favorite book if not one of my favorites so there's a fair amount of fine liner on the small areas here um, and every page pretty much I don't want to show you you know every single page and there's one that I don't definitely want to show you because it's a buddy colour for August so anyway um, I have used fine liner here I mean these bits here are absolutely I'll just bring you in they're so small these little bits here that they just needed fine liner and even on this bit here I used um, fine liner make you sick again zooming out um so yeah they you know and then here well, let's just go back to this one um this was alcohol markers i think i use fine line in some little bits here yeah these little buildings down here i used fine liner so small details and then the last small details to show you is obviously this vertical world's coloring book so I'll show you an example here um there's quite a lot of pencil here where did i use fine liner right so on these little detaily bits i i used fine liner um i used it let's have a look what else there must be some other pages in here that i've done yep definitely fine liner here on this uh, roller coaster the blue and the red um even on these little edge bits so small areas i definitely like to use a lot of the fine liner um what else then um the second way that i use um the um, fine liners, sorry for saying erm um, all the time, this is clearly because I haven't been filming videos for a while. The second way I use them is using the fine liner as a base, then shading on top with pencil. Now, to be honest, I don't use this method a whole lot. Um, I use the first method a lot where I just colour on small areas and don't shade with pencil on top. But I use this shading on top bit less. I guess if I use a large, if I have a larger area. So in this beautiful book, Colour the Ocean by the lovely Lottie Ford. Um, this was a July page. I did use fine liner on some areas. I can't really remember which bits, but this pink might be um, one of the, the luminous colours, basically. 
um, neon colours, should I call it. And then inside this house, I think, can you see this little green sofa or armchair? I think I used pencil. I mean, I think I used fine liner and then I shaded on top. I think I did. Um, and then also with some of the other bits and pieces, like the cupboard, the little details here. They're absolutely tiny, so I am going to have to bring you in. You're struggling to see otherwise. So all these little bits and bobs in here, I used fine liner and I think I might have added a little bit of shading on top. So that's really the second way. I think I did the same here on, on these weird like plant things at the bottom of the ocean. These little, I don't even know how to describe them, some sort of plant things. Anyway, I used fine liner and then I think I, I used some pencil on top. So that's the second way that I use it. I quite like how this page came out. Um, and it's always good to use fine liner on small details. And of course you can always add your shading with pencil. So that's that example. Third way, is for adding details and accentuating. So, um, what examples have I got for you here? So now, I've only started, well, I have done it before, but I've, I'm doing it more regularly now, I guess. So in this book, I've got one of my most favourite pages, which is this one from the Yururi Sketchbook Mouse. So, accentuating is when I've completed the picture, I want to, um, I don't know, um, the best word I can think of is accentuate. I want to accentuate the details, bring out the details a bit more. So here I have added some fine liner um, strokes for the feathers on this lovely kingfisher bird. Um, I did the same a little bit for you, Yururi's mouse's face or head here. Um, and also for this little mole, I think it's a mole, I don't, I'm not sure. But yeah, the, the sort of fur or hair on the mole's head. And also for the grass. So you know these lines here are from the fine liner. So I add lines just to accentuate the grass. I mean, you can do it with pencil. Like polychromos is really good to do it with because it's quite... Um, you know, a, a harder pencil and it's, it keeps a sharp point well, but it's not going to, it's not going to, it's not going to be as, um, um, what's the word? It's not going to be as obvious or as striking as if you use pencil. And I think, sorry, as you, as if, you know, you use fine liner. So I think, Using fine liner definitely. I think I did it here as well for this for these reeds or whatever they are, the tall grassy bits. I think it really does add to it. And then and you can add these sort of accent uh, you know, you could sort of add these um details and accentuate your pencil colouring and glitter's gone everywhere, but anyway, um with fine liners on pages like this and I, and I think it really does bring out the details. Um, and takes your colouring, I think, to the next level. I really think it makes um, a difference. And even on this hat here, I added some there as well. But you can do it for things like fur, for hair, for um, grass, you know, anything really um, where you want to bring out some texture, I guess, or add to it to, to make it look like texture. So that is the third way which is adding details and accentuating your colouring and then the final way is for shading and for depth now what I mean by for shading and for depth is this so I'm, go I'm going to demonstrate this one I think because why not so the others are quite self-explanatory I think I hope you agree if not, I mean, I could do further videos. I'm hoping to do a little more of, you know, how I do things. So, if we look at this, well, let's have a, I don't know if I've got the right colour here, but probably not, knowing me. Um, right, let's use this. So, here you see I've got, this is just some stamped images, stamped 
I don't know when, but you can see that I've I've actually done this in watercolour and then I did some on with ink tents and then I activated it and then if I bring this close and then add the, um, this is for adding extra shading and depth, I add the fine liner and then I take the um, water brush and I sort of soften it a little bit like that. Um, you can add as much or as little as you like. But yeah, this is, you know, if you want to darken some areas, you know, you want to make the dark areas really dark, this is another way that you can sort of darken the dark areas even more, especially if your pencil won't go down anymore because you've added so many layers, unless it's polychromos, in which case you can go forever. Um, so yeah, that's basically what I mean, which is a fourth way where for shading and for depth. Um, and I use that quite a lot actually. Now it does, how well it works does depend on the quality of the paper and actually the shade of the shade of the fine liner because some fine liners um, dissolve with the water better than others. And here are a couple of examples of where I did that. There is, what page, I'm just looking at my notes. Oh, the B page. So the B page I used right, on this house. You in? On this house, um, I used some of the fine liners on the edges just to make them very, very dark. Um, like these, maybe a pencil or something. These little, these bits here, the edges. Can you see it? Sorry. Right, so these bit on the edges here and here and here. I made them really dark by using fine liner, brown fine liner, and then using my water brush to sort of dissolve it a little bit, just to soften the edges so it doesn't look too harsh. I also did that on the, um, the you know, trunk of the trees. Um, here's some more example of the fine liner here. What I did is added the, you know, that was... That was a third way, which is for adding details and accentuating. So to give the impression of the furry bee's body, basically. And, and I added some fine liner lines there. And of course, the first way I use it, which is to use on the edges of things or small areas. So like the little panelling, the wood panelling on the um, house itself. So yeah, that's um, an example of how um, how I use the fine liners for shading and for depth um, and using a water brush with it. The other way, of course, that I, that I forgot to mention before, which you'll see in my How I Colour Bricks video, is for these bricks, I added fine liner and then I used my water brush. So I did a few dots of the fine liner and then I used my water brush on top. So it's a bit like this. I don't want this video to be too long because for some reason, my um, iPad is having issues with taking up videos um, because, of course, this is in higher quality. So there, if you have a look, that's... Let me bring you in. I'm such a novice. You wouldn't think I'm a novice after three years of doing YouTube, but... Oh, well. So I had a few dots just to add texture, and then I used my water brush to... Um, soften it a little bit. Now, you don't have to soften it. You can just keep that as it is like that. But I think it's a little bit better if you soften it a little bit with water. And on this paper, it, it works. I hope I was on camera, you know, when I did that. Because if I wasn't... So let me just show you here again. This is definitely on camera, isn't it? Yeah. Like that. And then um, a little bit of water like that just to smooth it out not too much because i don't want to blend it all over the thing but um yeah so that's another way and then in rooms of wonder i think i've got a picture to show you as well so yeah this is again the way where i have used to 
use the fine liners for depth and for shading. So I used it quite a lot. I, I used the fine liners, oops, sorry. I used the fine liners a little bit further in. Oh, sorry for making you sick. Um, I used them in these areas here, you know, on the edges to make them really dark. Um, and I used a corresponding colour. So if this is like a, like a, I don't know, a deep red colour, then I, I chose like a, um, a deep red colour to go there and I'd put it on the edge and then use my water brush to sort of blend it out a little bit. Um, so I used it on this page, especially for the background areas. I think I also used it a little bit for these edges here as well. So I did my fine liner and then I used my water brush to sort of, um, you know, blend it out a bit. And that's it. Those are all the ways, the main ways, the four main ways that I use my um, fine liners. Um, so the first way was just for small details, for small areas. The second way was using it as a base and then shading on top with pencil. The third way was for adding details and accentuating. So like the bricks here where I wanted to add texture. And then like the Yururi mouse page where I showed you how I had it for grass blades and, you know, for fur, for hair. And then the final wave were for shading and for depth where I used the fine liner with a water brush to darken the dark the darker areas to make them darker. But I guess you could also use, you know, a yellow to lighten the lighter areas, I guess, but I've not really tried that. So that's it really. I hope you found this video useful um, and yeah, and I hope you are enjoying your day and thank you so much for watching if you stayed with me all the way to the end. So until next time, take care, happy colouring, bye.